Mark Nepo, remember the book we studied last year in the fall, More Together Than Alone. He says that he pulls a, a couple of things together from some studies that I think really accentuates the power of community, both from the sense of heart and mind. In terms of heart, he says, two living heart cells taken from different people and put into a Petri dish will over time find a, a third common heartbeat. Isn't that incredible? So these two little cells that have distinct heartbeats will over time come up with a third common heartbeat. The power of the heart to harmonize cannot be understated. And it's the same with the brain. When we meditate together, as we just did, there is a power from studies that says that when people meditate together, their brain waves actually harmonize with one another. And when a newcomer joins the group, the newcomer's brain begins to harmonize with the new group. Pretty incredible, right? All the stuff that's going on invisibly in community that we don't even see is just as potent right now, even when we're just connecting online, or so it seems that's where our physical presence shows up. But so much more is going on with all the connections that we have spiritually, at, at the heart level, the soul level, and the level of mind and consciousness. So when we come together, there is an assimilation, a kind of weaving that makes us even more beautiful, even more colorful, even stronger together, like a, a literal weave would. In the children's book, Many Hands, uh, Penas, uh, uh, Penobscot, excuse me, Indian story by Angela Perot, she talks about the, this, um, the main character is 10-year-old Lily. And Lily it has this dream that comes where her grandmother visits her in a dream. And she gets inspired after that dream to weave a beautiful basket, to really master the art of basket weaving. And so she works on this basket and she weaves this really beautiful basket and she can't wait to take it to the village and show it off. And when she brings it to the village, Nobody shows any, any impress, like, that they're really impressed with her work, with what she's created. They say, many hands create the basket, and then they just go back to their work. And Lily's like, oh my gosh, but, well, fine, but didn't my hands create this basket? Why am I not getting any credit for this? And she keeps taking it to different people and gets the same response. So what is the moral of this lesson, of course, is the power of community that even though there may be an individual contribution, there are many individual contributions that plants and animals contributed to the natural resources that were a part of this basket, that many individuals helped prepare the materials in various ways. And so it's not one individual act alone. We don't act to get individual acknowledgement. We act to make the greater stronger, to make something that is worthwhile for the whole. And that's what the tribe was teaching Lily.